Hi, in this video, we're going to be learning all about the new Lenovo Yoga teacher device. So stay tuned to learn a little bit more about the device and the new docking station. Here we have the new Lenovo Yoga 13 inch teacher device. This device is a laptop device with an attached keyboard and it is a Windows device. So it's gonna function the same as other Windows devices you've used, but the form factor might just be a little bit different than what you're used to. This device is a two-in-one device, so it is going to be able to flip around to tablet mode. You're gonna be able to do the full 360 degree screen and the screen will rotate as you move it around. So you're always gonna be able to use it in whatever orientation you want. I'm going to go ahead and flip this back to laptop mode for the time being. Here in laptop mode, we do have a touchpad that functions like usual, and we can use the bottom of the touchpad to left click and right click. One difference with this device, though, is we do have a little red dot here. This also functions as a mini trackpad. This device also has a few ports on the side, so let's take a closer look at those. On the left hand side, up at the top there, we have a USB-C charging port. Moving on down, we have another USB port, which is a Thunderbolt port. This is also going to be our docking port, which we're going to use to connect to the docking station. The next port that we have is going to be a network port. Moving further down, we have a USB port and a headphone jack. Moving over to the right hand side, starting at the top, we have an HDMI port, which is going to allow you to connect to a TV or another external display. We have another USB port for a total of two. We'll have a micro SD card slot and finally our power button. One other thing that you might have noticed on the right hand side is this little red line here. This is actually our docked pen. This device does come with a pen and it does dock in the device, which is a really nice feature. The pen is a little bit smaller than you might be used to, but it is an active stylus with pressure sensitivity, a couple buttons that you can customize, and it charges in the dock. We'll learn a little bit more about the pen a little bit later. When you open up the device, you will see that you have a webcam here. Go ahead and bring that nice and close. This webcam does have a privacy slider. It's just a little slider here. You can go ahead and slide that and now your webcam is being blocked. If you open that up, now your webcam is active. This doesn't block software from using your webcam. However, when you have it blocked like this in this red mode with the dot, that means the camera will only see a black feed. It won't see your actual face. And then when you slide that open, the camera will be able to see you or whatever it's facing. I also want to just take a closer look at that keyboard. Again, we have that red trackpad dot. You can just move your finger along that and that will allow you to use the trackpad and you do have your left click and right click buttons, as well as a more formal trackpad that behaves like you would expect. One other thing to be aware of on the keyboard is your control key and your function key have been switched. So you just need to be mindful of that when you're using your control shortcuts. It's not the very last key, it's just one over. In addition to the new device, we're also gonna get a new docking station. Your technician should have set your docking station up for you, and it should look something like this. We'll already have a few things plugged in here, depending on our configuration. Uh, for example, we do have this power cord here that goes directly to the wall, so this docking station gets powered. And we're going to have a display port or two plugged into our monitor. This item here is a USB-C cord, and this is going to actually connect to our device. I have some additional slots that I can learn about. These next two slots here, we have an HDMI port for connecting to a TV, as well as another external display port for connecting to a second monitor if we choose. We're also gonna have four USB slots. However, one of mine is currently taken up by a dongle. And we're gonna have an ethernet port here in the middle, which will allow us that nice hardwired connection. I don't currently have mine plugged in. I also have a power button on the top of the dock. So I can go ahead and turn the dock off if I need to. I'm going to want to make sure that that's on and glowing. I have some additional ports on the back side of the dock as well. I have one additional USB port. So a total of five USB ports on the dock. I have another USB-C port for connecting to USB-C devices as that becomes more popular. And I have a headphone jack for attaching headphones or speakers to this dock. This dock is going to function very similarly to the Surface dock or any other dock I might have used in that it's going to allow me to connect my teacher device to my peripherals. In this example here, my external monitor, my keyboard, and my mouse. 
I'm just going to take that USB-C cord that's plugged in at the very end here, find that USB-C end here, and go ahead and plug that into the corresponding USB-C port on the left side of my device. Remember to plug that cable into the second port there, the docking port, for best results. Go ahead and wake my device up, and my light should turn white here, letting me know that I am connected. And now I can use my keyboard to sign in. Once I sign into my device, my other screen should activate here, and I can go ahead and set up my duplicate or extend configuration as I like. If I like to disconnect, all I need to do is unplug the dock, and I can now take my teacher device around the classroom. To reconnect, I simply just plug it back into that USB-C slot, and it will reconnect to the monitor. One other neat thing is I can actually put my whole display to sleep either by closing my device like normal, or I can use this power button on the docking station to put everything to sleep. I can wake everything back up by pressing that power button again, and once I sign in, everything will wake back up. Now that we know a little bit more about the externals of the device, as well as the new docking station, let's take a look at some of the other settings we might want to configure on the device itself. Now that we've learned a little bit more about the externals of the device, let's take a look under the hood. This device is a Windows 10 device, so it will work the same as your previous device. You'll still be able to connect to your Wi-Dai. You'll still be able to use the Microsoft Store to download and update apps. Additionally, all of your access to your documents as well as your OneDrive will be the same. So this device really will feel familiar once you start using it. Next up, I'd like to talk about Global Protect. First, we need to understand what Global Protect is. Global Protect is a VPN, which basically means Global Protect is going to allow us to connect to district services, such as Moses and MCS Online, while we are not at a district site. So when you first sign on to your device, you're gonna see one of two things. The first thing that you might see is if you are on the district network. If you are on the district network, you are going to see this connection failed option, which is okay. We can just ignore that because we're connected to district services. We don't need to do anything in this case. We can just use our device as usual and just ignore that initial pop-up. The other thing that we might see is we might be prompted to sign in and connect to Global Protect so that we can access district services while at home. Let's learn a little bit more about how to do that. The first thing that we're going to have to do is select a certificate and we're going to come down here and find the certificate that has our computer name in it. It's okay if you don't know your computer name, just look for the one with some letters and numbers, dash R domain, and go ahead and click on that and click OK. And then you will be prompted to sign into Global Protect and you can use your district credentials here, just your username and your computer password. No need to do the full email. You click sign in. And once you sign in, it will let you know that you are now connected to Global Protect and you are good to browse the internet and access any internal district services you need while away. At any point, if you need to, you can disconnect from this service as well just by clicking disconnect button and that will remove your district connection. Your regular Wi-Fi connection will always work. This piece here is just if you need to use district services while off the district network. I'm going to go ahead and click connect again to reconnect. At any time, you need to find Global Protect to either connect or disconnect. It's easy to find. Just come down here in the taskbar, click the up arrow, and click on the globe icon for Global Protect to open this dashboard back up and connect or disconnect as needed. A couple things to know, if you are working remotely or you are doing some work from home, you will need to make sure to sign into this each time you sign into your device. Again, just pick the certificate from the dropdown and sign in with your credentials. Let's learn a little bit more about our device. As we talked about already, you do have an active pen that comes with this device, and as such, you can customize that pen a little bit more. So let's take a look. If I open up my Start menu here, I'm going to want to look for an app called Lenovo Pen Settings. In this case here, I don't have it installed, so I'm going to open up the Microsoft Store and install it myself. I come up here and search for Lenovo Pen Settings. And I do want this red app here called Lenovo Pen Settings. Once I click on this app, I can click Get or Install, depending on my prompt here. And if it asks me to sign in, I can actually just close this out and the installation process should start. Once this finishes installing, we can open up the app to do a little bit more customization. 
Let's finish installing, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Come into my start menu and look for Lenovo pen settings in the else to open up the app. Once the app is open, I do get some information here. I can see my current pen battery up at the top. One thing I'd like you to know is this pen does have enough battery for just about two hours. However, if you pop it in the garage for 15 seconds, you will get an 80% charge with five minutes giving you a full charge. Moving over here, we can customize our buttons. As you can see here, I have my top barrel button customized to right click when I hold that button and tap on the screen and the bottom barrel button when I press and hold that on the screen, that is an erase. I can click this menu here and I do get a lot of other prompts that I can customize these buttons with. Again, these buttons work on a press and hold functionality and then I tap the screen to activate whatever setting I set. Here, I'm gonna leave this as right click and erase. The next setting I can change here is whether or not I wanna see my battery in the taskbar. And that just gives me a second battery icon down here, letting me know the status of my pen battery. Finally, I can adjust the pen tip sensitivity, making it a little bit less sensitive or a little bit more sensitive depending on my needs. I'm gonna leave mine right in the middle. Once I have all this set up here, I can go ahead and close out and those settings are automatically saved. And I should now have this battery icon down here at the bottom, letting me know how full my battery is. If at any point that does disappear, it might have moved into this little up arrow here and I can check out the pen battery there. Thank you for watching this video all about the new teacher device. Hopefully you are now equipped to get started with your new device and thank you for watching.